Now the third topic here in this chapter is operators. And similar to what we did in the descriptions and mappings, uh, this operator uses the same or similar uh, methodology uh, with a different application. Uh, so the definition of operators is the translation and rotation of vectors on the same frame. So we have only one frame and we have a vector and we're trying to translate and rotate that vector relative to the same frame. So as we did earlier, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take translational operators only and then we're going to look at rotational operators and then we're going to look at the general case when we have translation and rotation. Okay, translational operators, the translation of vectors with no rotation on the same frame. Okay, in this case, we add vectors, exactly what we did earlier uh, in other cases. So let's look at this uh, graph here. We have frame A, which is the only frame we have, which includes X, A, Y, A, and Z, A. And then we have this vector in red that defines P1 relative to frame A. So that vector is called P1 relative to frame A. Okay, that's the red vector right here. So what we did now, we translated this vector, this red vector, only translation, and we moved it into this right here, which is shown in green. And that translation happened through this Q relative to A vector. Okay, so we took this line and we moved it along Q relative to A until it reached this P1 relative to A. Okay, and we're going to call this P2 now. Okay, uh, after we move this P1 relative to A from here to here, we're going to call this point P2. And now what I need to find is I need to find the definition of P2 relative to frame A. Okay, so this P1 relative to A is given, the translation vector is given, Q relative to A, and what we need to find is the definition of point P2 relative to A, that point relative to A, okay? And in this case, of course, as we said, we can add vectors. So this blue P2 relative to A equals to this red Q relative to A plus this green P1 relative to A, which is similar to P1 relative to A right here. Okay. So P2 relative to A equals to P1 relative to A plus Q relative to A. Where Q is the translation vector that we have shown right here in this graph. Now let's take an example here on the translational operators. Vector P1 relative to A is translated 10 units in XA and 5 units in YA. Find the new resulting vector P2 relative to A, if the original vector P1 relative to A equals to 3, 7, 0 transpose. Okay, so for the solution, as we saw earlier, P2 relative to A equals to P1 relative to A plus Q relative to A. So uh, since we are given P1 relative to A already, P1 relative to A is given directly right here, 3, 7, and 0. I put 3, 7, and 0 here. Plus Q relative to A is given in words. So that's P1 relative to A is translated 10 units in XA. So that's 10 units here. And 5 units in YA. So that's 5 units here. There's no mentioning of any motion in ZA. So that means this would be 0. If we add these two vectors, we get the results 13, 12, and 0. And that would define point P2 relative to A. Now let's do an n-class exercise. So I want you to do this on your own. Uh, vector P1 relative to A is translated negative 7, 11, and negative 4 units in XA, YA, and ZA respectively. Find the new resulting vector P2 relative to A if the original vector P1 relative to A equals to 6, negative 3, and negative 9 transpose. Uh, I want you to do this on your own, so I'm going to pause here for a few seconds. Please pause the video 
and try to do this uh, exercise. Once you're done, you can unpause so you can see the results. Okay, now I'm gonna assume that you are done with solving this exercise. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the results. P2 relative to A equals to P1 relative to A plus QA. P1 relative to A is given right here, six, negative three, and negative nine. And that's right here we put there. And then Q relative to A is given in words, and that would be negative seven, 11, and negative four which we put and substitute right here. If we add these two vectors together, we get negative one, eight, and negative 13 units. Now, when we have rotation, we can talk about rotational operators here. So this is the rotation of vectors without translation on the same frame, okay? In this case, multiply by the rotation matrix, which is similar to what we did earlier uh, in other cases. So let's look at this graph here. We have frame A, which is the only frame. And then we have a point here, P1, that you see in red. And this P1 is defined by P1 relative to A, that's the red line, P1 relative to A, okay? Now, what we did here, we rotated this vector, the red vector, about uh, an axis, it can be any axis, uh, by theta degrees. And that vector resulted in another vector that you see here in, in blue, which is called P2 relative to A, and that also resulted in another point, P2, that's defined relative to A, okay? So now what we need to do is, we need to define P2 relative to A, basically find the definition of this blue line. If we are given the definition of the red line, which, which is P1 relative to A, and we're given the rotation angle and the axis of rotation, okay? Now in this case, P2 relative to A equals to the rotation about axis K, that K could be any axis, could be X axis or Y axis or, the, or Z axis by theta degrees, okay? And that's multiplied by P1 relative to A, which is given also in the problem. Right? So if we can have uh, a solution for rotation matrix uh, about k axis by theta degrees, then we can pre-multiply this by P1 relative to A to find P2 relative to A. Now let's take an example here about uh, on the rotational operators. Vector P1 relative to A is rotated 30 degrees about ZA axis. Find the new resulting vector P2 relative to A if the original vector P1 relative to A equals to 0, 2, and 0 transpose. Now, the first thing we need to find the rotation matrix since it's giving here that the rotation was 30 degrees about Z axis. That means it will be rotation about Z by 30 degrees. Uh, rotation about Z means that there's one at the lower lower right uh, element of the matrix, and then zeros in the same, the remainder elements of the row and column. Then we have cosine 30, negative sine 30, and sine 30, and cosine 30, okay? So if we can leave it this way again, or we can just evaluate these signs and cosines and get what, they, what their values numerically uh, and put them here. Okay, now that we find the rotation uh, about the axis of rotation, and we have the angle of rotation. Uh, we got the rotation matrix, so we can put it here, and we can pre-multiply it by P1 relative to A that's given uh, in the uh, example. So P2 relative to A equals to the rotation that we just found about Z times this P1 relative to A that's given. If we do this multiplication and simplify, we're gonna find out that that vector would be negative one 1.732 and 0. Okay, so that will give me the definition of P2 relative to frame A. Now let's do an in-class exercise where I want you to do this on your own. Vector P1 relative to A is rotated relative to frame A about Y axis by 60 degrees. 
find find r y by 60 degrees then find p2 relative to a if p1 relative to a equals to 3 0 negative 5 transpose uh, I want you to do this uh, on your own, so I'm going to pause here for a few seconds. Please pause this video. Once you're done solving this exercise, you can resume to see the answer. Okay, assuming that you have done the uh, exercise and found the solution already, let's go through the solution. First, the rotation matrix, it's about y-axis, so that's the rotation about y, by 60 degrees, so that's 60 degrees here. Since it's rotation about y, that means we have the one right here in the middle, and then you have zeros and zeros and the remainder elements of uh, the same row and column. And then we have cosine, sine, and the negative sine here, and cosine of 60 degrees. Okay, so we can leave it this way, or again, we can evaluate this uh, to the numerical value. Once we have the definition of the rotation matrix, then we can pre-multiply that rotation matrix by P1 relative to A, which is given right here, and that will give me P2 relative to A. So P2 relative to A equals to the rotation matrix that we just found here, multiplied by P1 relative to A, that's given here, and that multiplication results in negative 2.83, 0, and negative 5.098, uh, which are the definition of P2 relative to frame A.